All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm in the house with the Bestec Shodan here with me for a review. We're gonna analyze the look, the sound and the feel of this bad boy. But first of all, let me say a huge shout out to my buddy Brandon for sending this guy along so I'm able to share my impressions with you. And second of all, don't forget to like this video and why not? You're in a good mood? Subscribe to the channel because I'm just gonna keep cranking out some content for you guys and it's gonna be pretty fun, I, I hope. Um, let's get started guys. Overall length on this bad boy is going to be 8.6-8.7 inches, so not a small boy. 3.5 inch long cutting edge, but 4 inch long blade and almost 5 inch long handle, which translates into uh, 22 centimeters for the overall length and 8.5 for the cutting edge and 10 for the overall blade length and uh, 12, a little bit more than 12 for the handle. Uh, let's quickly check uh, uh, some options right over here. We've got Ontario round number two and Ontario round number one. And we are pretty much in the same league of the big boys here. Round one is in uh, play. This is the Benchmade bug out and here you've got the mini bug out. So you can see that this is uh, not a mini knife. It's a pretty big boy. And uh, look at that. Spyderco Paramilitary 2. It's pretty much, uh, it's a little bit smaller than that. Uh, uh, and Para 3, of course, uh, kind of like dwarfed by that. Uh, here you've got uh, uh, Chris Reeve knives, a large Sebenza 21, and of course the small Sebenza 21 is going to be up here uh, next to, let me show you this guy over here, because yeah, that's the Hinder XM18, so another popular option right there. What ex can I show you? Oh, a couple of fancy ones. Uh, uh, here you have a Spectre by Holt Bladeworks, and here you got the Haptic by Holt Bladeworks. So we are like in a different league completely here, but just to show you the size comparison and why not this two couple here because it's just like crazy beautiful uh, Shirogov of Custom Division uh, F95 NL and Neon NL in the house to show you how big the best tech Shodan is so uh, these are cool by the way and um, uh, this is also cool, it has some very, very interesting aspects, some that I'm not really fond of, but uh, you know, you can't have all in your life. So uh, what I like, for example, uh, I mean, this is a titanium frame lock with marble carbon fiber scale made in China by Bestec. Uh, it's the Shodan, so uh, it's uh, relatively cheap. Uh, it's um, uh, you know, you, you can find this guy for like in the secondary market, it would be even better if you don't want to uh, pay the full price, full retail price, but you're going to get something pretty cool. Um, like, I mean, look at the carbon fiber here going on. It's pretty nice, nice shimmering. It's a good quality marble carbon fiber. Then you got some nice chamfering going on. A lot of design elements, like you got uh, holes, uh, you got grooves, you got lines, you got holes uh, here, you got jimping on this side. Uh, you see, look at the, the elaborate clipping uh, clip uh, going on with this cutout, which I really don't understand why. Uh, these three elements, you know, there's three holes, three of these, three of those. So I, I get that, yeah, but uh, probably a little bit too much going on uh, for my taste, at least. And also reminds me a little bit of a Strider handle. There's a, some Strider vibe uh, going on here. Like uh, if you check uh, the uh, cutting edge to overall length ratio, this is not gonna be fantastic because for example, I don't know, let's check this. Uh, cutting edge is the same, but look at the packaging of the neon. It's just uh, mind blowing. It's not comparable, of course. So here you have a different grip. It's, it's everything is different. So I'm not comparing apples to uh, pears, but uh, I want to say that uh, Strider also carries like a, a similar handle to blade ratio. Um, this is a uh, 2D milling uh, scales uh, uh, technology, let's say, and uh, you got one nice finger groove over here. So if you hold it like that, the finger here is going to be fantastic. Of course, you can choke it up and take advantage of this full finger groove, uh, finger choil uh, right there. 
uh, very simple construction. You can also check my maintenance video if you are curious on to you know on, on how to maintain this guy, how to disassemble, how to take care of this, and or maybe you're just curious, you want to see how this guy looks on the inside. Yeah, feel free, go ahead, look uh, it up, and you're gonna find uh, my maintenance and. Uh, and then you got uh, some titanium geared um, matching with this, you see, with this cutout uh, backspacer, which is fully reaching here to protect the tip of the blade, which, by the way, is absolutely centered. Uh, you have also lanyard hold option, like just a hold uh, um, mill through the scales and through the backspacer right there. Um, you got... Uh, an interesting look when closed. It's probably not my style uh, because of the various elements uh, going on, not really well tied together in my opinions, in my opinion. And, uh, and then you got um, uh, T8 uh, Torx bit screws for the pivot and for the handle and they're just like two. So pretty straightforward uh, to take it apart. Uh, they're pretty much flush, just protruding just a smidge, just a little bit, nothing too crazy. Pivot is captive, it's not spinning, and that's a very good thing. There are some, uh, um, some grooves underneath, and this is not going to turn when you take it apart. And then you've got the stainless steel lock face insert uh, screwed in from the outside with a over-travel stop bar integrated in it, so you're not going to be able to overextend the lock bar, and that's a pretty cool thing. Um, stainless steel detent ball. There is no detent ball ramp, so you're going to feel a little bit of this um, step right here. Uh, tip up carry only, titanium, 2D milled pocket clip, nice uh, um, nice uh, clip retention. I like the spring tension of this clip. It's not too strong, not too weak. Um, you get a, a nice clip ramp in and out. Uh, the pocket clip is tip up carry only. It's not reversible. You cannot put it on this side. Um, and then you got this blade, which is S35 VN steel, uh, dual uh, tone, because you get uh, these flats uh, and the fuller here that are stonewashed, and the main bevel is uh, satin. You see the grind, uh, the belt grind lines are going on vertically. So dual tone finish, nice, good looking. Uh, you got the divot here for your thumb, and then you slide it over, and then you got the jimping, which is. Uh, uh, functional, not too aggressive, even if it's that deep, because it's nicely chamfered around. There's a little bit of chamfering going on and stops like up to the beginning here of this fuller, right? And then of course you get a cutout, it's not sharp because there's extra chamfering, and this guy comes down to the tip and you have 100% belly up to the no sharpening choil. Look at this, see, there's no sharpening choil. This is a massive finger choil, um, but you stop right there to sharpen. So be careful with that. You can't just go over because you have this part, which is done like that. So it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. And then you got uh, another three scallops uh, uh, elements going on on both sides to reprise the one two three one two three and one two three uh, uh, mood uh, motive going on all around the knife uh, except for the four uh, jimped uh, grooves on the uh, blade um, and then you have uh, Bestec Knives logo and S35V uh, writing right over here. So like the sterile look on this side, um, you have uh, uh, the plunge grind. Basically, it's like perpendicular and just making a little curve up here. So that's uh, something pretty strange, uh, but it's just like that. And uh, let's quickly see how thick this blade is. It's going to be 0.155. Uh, and the uh, thickness behind the edge, let me see, right over here. Oops right over here. It's going to be, look at that, 0 0.016. So that's a pretty good slicer for a flat grind uh, blade. Uh, not too thick. It's, it's a very good slicer. This sound is a nice clack. Not too unique or like memorable, but it's, it's a nice sound, nice and deep, pleasant. When you close the knife, you got this click, which is classic. So very pleasant sound. Interesting. Um, also, you've got uh, uh, some interesting weight because you can also find a titanium version for this guy. This is, of course, is going to be uh, lighter because of the carbon fiber and it's going to be weighting in at 4.3, 4.31 ounces in your pocket. So not too shabby for like a, a big boy like this. Um, also, 
like you choke this guy up like that and yeah i'm feeling some hot spots right over here i choke up like that even more so that is gone but i still feel something right here in the clip so it's not like ideal a little bit sharp uh, you got um, enough room to disengage the lock bar even like a milled out area which extends up to this point so that's good uh, i would have preferred maybe some jimping here and just lose this jimping here because it's like no no it's just aesthetical you know that it's flush it doesn't protrude so it's not useful so something here to have a little bit more grip would have been fantastic but whatever not a biggie um then the knife i mean it feels uh, it feels solid in the hand because of course the backspacer extends to this point so it's good there's no flex uh, these all uh, all these elements are conferring some uh, uh, grippiness to the handle even if it's uh, pretty smooth over here but these uh, are giving you the amount of grip uh, enough that's going to be enough so that uh, uh, you know it's not going to be too slippery uh, also i mean it feels pretty well put together i don't see any gaps or misalignments or like uh, something uh, that it's like uh, shockingly bad it's uh not rattling when shaken so fit and finish is yeah it's a pass for me also there is no blade play feels absolutely solid up and down left and right no uh, lock stick finger soreness it's pretty you're gonna be pretty good as long as you do the light switch button and take advantage of this tiny flipper tab with this little jimping going on over here boom you're gonna be in business i don't really bother with the uh, push button i just banged the uh, blade on my finger but uh, you know just bo don't bother with the push button it's not gonna work just do a light switch and it's gonna be fine um and then you got uh, of course this guy is running on uh, bearings and the deployment speed is accordingly fast and the closing action is what i really like because you disengage the lock bar like that and you see like the blade just wants to drop shot but you put this guy in the vertical position and nothing happens then you need just to wiggle a little bit and this guy is gonna glide down which is really cool of course you can take advantage of this hole over here and do a spidey flick it's gonna be super fun or just thumb flick like that fantastic you can even use like two fingers like that and make sure that this guy is gonna deploy reliably all the time i, I probably prefer the spidey flick it's just uh, super classy in my opinion also nice detent uh, um that nicely dialed in it's very good uh, it works really really well to have this blade fly out like crazy really really cool so i mean it's uh, it has probably too much of a strider vibe too much uh, um design elements uh, cranked together they are not like blending in my opinion that well but i love the idea of the full uh, fully usable finger choil and safe finger choil but you lose the sharpening choil so just do a little maybe an extra sharpening choil right over here you're gonna have like a full you know advanced grip uh, save for the finger and also for the sharpening in the future down the road a little bit of hot spots uh, in the handle not uh, perfect ergo in my opinion but it's a good knife it's good looking good materials and yeah if you like it go for it so there you have it hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching and stay tuned